It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. Then along came Sir Topham Hatt, the man in charge of all the engines on the island of Sodor. We will pull you out, said Sir Topham Hatt. But Henry only blew steam at him. Because, he said, my doctor has forbidden me to pull. Then they tried pushing from the other end. Sir Topham Hatt said, one, two, three, push. My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed. Everyone argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. Eventually, even Sir Topham Hatt gave up. We shall take away your rails, he said, and leave you here until you're ready to come out of the tunnel. They took up the old rails and built a wall in front of Henry so that other engines wouldn't bump into him. It was full of important people, like Sir Topham Hatt, and Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Everyone came to see Gordon. Hmm, said Sir Topham Hatt. These big engines are always causing me trouble. Send for another engine at once. Phew, <laughs> said Gordon. That's no use. I told you so, said Gordon. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said Sir Topham Hatt. I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? Oh, yes, said Henry. When Henry had got up steam, he puffed out. He would have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said Sir Topham Hatt. Then they coupled him up. Everyone was excited. Sir Topham Hatt leaned out of the window to wave at Edward and Henry. But the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for tea. Sir Topham Hatt came to see what was the matter, and the conductor and station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's only Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. They were telling Sir Topham Hatt what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back, they saw how sad he was and couldn't be cross. There watching him was Sir Topham Hatt. What are you doing here, Thomas? He asked. Why did you come so fast? You've got a lot to learn about freight cars, Thomas. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Hello, he always said to Thomas. Don't let the silly freight cars tease you. Remember, you have an important job as a special helper in the train yard. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas, he said, I've heard all about it, and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint, and you shall have a branch line all to yourself. You're a special mixed traffic engine, said Sir Topham Hatt. You can pull coaches or freight cars quite easily, but you must learn by your mistakes. James knew what Sir Topham Hatt meant. Everyone came to admire James. Whee! A shower of water fell on Sir Topham's nice new top hat, and James thought they had better go. Go on, go on, he puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, replied Edward. The coaches were grumbling too. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast. But James didn't listen. Next morning, he spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James didn't like that at all. At last, Sir Topham had arrived. I know you're sorry, James, and I know too that you want to be a useful engine. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. That's a good engine. There's nothing like determination. I want you to pull some freight cars for me. James was delighted and puffed away. Then, James saw Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, dear, what will he say, he asked himself. 
I was in Edward's train, and I saw everything. You've made the most troublesome train on the line behave. After that performance, you deserve to keep your red coat. They were all shining with new paint. He was careful not to bump them, but Topham Hatt climbed onto a cart and blew the conductor's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir. I'll try. Do your best, James, said Sir Topham Hatt. And Sir Topham Hatt was very impressed. Well done. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James. Soon the inspector and Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Cheer up, Thomas, they said. We'll soon put you right. The driver told them what had happened. So the feed pipe is blocked. He climbed up and peered in. Then, excuse me, sir, please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, inspector, replied Sir Topham Hatt. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Inspector, he whispered, can you see fish? Gracious goodness me, how did the fish get there, driver? Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you. We must get them out. They all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank while Sir Topham Hatt looked on and told them how to do it. When they had caught all the fish, they had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. Mmm, that was good, said Sir Topham Hatt. But fish don't suit you, Thomas, so you mustn't do it again. No, sir, I won't, said Thomas sadly. Engines don't go fishing. It's too uncomfortable. They had more work to do and had to fetch their own coaches. The big engines thought they were too important to fetch coaches. Altogether, the engines were causing Sir Topham Hatt a great deal of trouble. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. Sir Topham Hatt had made them so that the tender engines can be turned round. Sir Topham Hatt sat in his office listening to the noise outside. The station master came in. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking. There's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We cannot allow that. Come along, Henry. It's time your train was ready. We'll see about that, said Sir Topham Hatt. No engine on my railway is too important for small jobs and he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Leave those freight cars, please, Edward, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. But next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Bless me, said Sir Topham Hatt. What a noise. They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt. And last night they said I have gray wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop, and they showed him all sorts of engines. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And Sir Topham Hatt brought Percy back to the yard. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like little tank engines. So I have shut them up, and I want you both to run the line for a while. And Percy will help, too. I hope you are sorry, he said, and that you understand that every job on the railway is important. We have a new tank engine called Percy, who helps pull coaches, and Thomas and Edward have worked the main line nicely. But I will let you out now if you promise to work hard. That's good, but please remember that this no-shunting nonsense must stop. Sir Topham Hatt then told Percy, Edward, and Thomas that they could go and play on the branch line for a few days. And they ran off happily to find Annie and Clarabelle at the junction. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to him, too. What's wrong with you, Henry? You have had lots of new parts and new paint, too, but they've done you no good. 
If we can't make you better, we must get another engine instead of you to do the work. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting when Henry came to the platform. He had taken off his hat and coat and put on overalls. Henry managed to start, but his fireman was not satisfied. Henry is a bad steamer, he said to Sir Topham Hatt. I build up his fire, but it doesn't give enough heat. All he could do was to go slowly onto a siding, and Edward took charge of the train. Sir Topham Hatt and the fireman went on discussing Henry's troubles. What do you think is wrong, fireman? asked Sir Topham Hatt. Henry's is small and can't make the heat. With Welsh coal, he'd be a different engine. It's expensive, said Sir Topham Hatt, but Henry must have a fair chance. James shall go and fetch some. When Henry reached the platform, the water was boiling nicely and he had to let off steam. How are you, Henry? Beep, beep, beep. I feel fine. Have you a good fire, driver? Never no record breaking, warned Sir Topham Hatt. Don't push him too hard. Henry won't need pushing, sir. I'll have to hold him back. Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm sending you to Crew, a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You'll feel a different engine, and you won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Take him away, he bellowed, and stop that noise. A lady and a stout gentleman stood on Toby's platform. He was, of course, Sir Topham Hatt, but Toby didn't know this yet. That's a tram engine, Stephen, said Sir Topham Hatt. They are mostly, but this is a steam tram. Stop, said Sir Topham Hatt to the conductor. They all scrambled into Henrietta. What is your name, asked Sir Topham Hatt. Toby, sir. Thank you, Toby, for a very nice ride. Thank you, sir, said Toby. All were sorry when they had to go away. And Sir Topham Hatt and his family thanked everyone. Come again soon, replied Toby. We will, we will, called the children. And they waved till Toby was out of sight. Sir Topham Hatt was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you're wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said Sir Topham Hatt. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police, and I must go at once. Dangerous to the public, indeed. We'll see about that. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. Sir Topham Hatt felt exhausted. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Sir Topham Hatt stared. Then he laughed. Well done, Thomas. Why didn't I think of it before? We need a tram engine. When I was on my holiday, I met a nice little engine called Toby. He takes freight cars from the farms, but the trucks are taking over most of his work and he needs a change. He has cow catchers and side plates. I'll write to his superintendent at once. A few days later, Toby arrived. That's a good engine, said Sir Topham Hatt. I see you've brought your coach, Henrietta. No, indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We couldn't allow that. <music> Sir Topham Hatt met them. Well done, Percy and Toby, he turned to James. Fancy letting your cars run away. I am surprised. You're not fit to be seen. You must be cleaned at once. Toby shall have a new coat of paint. Certainly, Toby. Oh, thank you, sir. She will be pleased. All James could do was watch Toby as he ran off happily with the news. They telephoned Sir Topham Hatt. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch? What's that you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please, and, and Gordon, leave him where he is. We'll get him out later. I'm not sure. 
We can't lift you out with a crane. The ground's not firm enough. Hmm, let me see. I wonder if Gordon could pull you out. We'll have you out in a couple of puffs. Are you ready? Heave! It was a lot harder than they all thought. At last, Thomas was free. That's all right, Thomas. You made me laugh, replied Gordon. I'm in disgrace. Why, so you are, Thomas. Shall we form an alliance? You help me, and I'll help you. Right you are, agreed Thomas. And buffer to buffer, the allies puffed home. Everyone was getting very excited, and the drivers felt sure that Sir Topham Hatt would agree, as indeed he did. The engines were all busy making plans when silence fell. The weather's changed badly. Mrs. Kindly is snowed up. Toby says he'll help to rescue her. You must help too, Thomas. There's no party unless you do. There's a good engine. You and Toby will manage splendidly. Suddenly, all the lights went on. What a marvelous sight awaited Mrs. Kindly. Well done, said Sir Topham Hatt. I'm really proud of you all. Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends thought it was the best Christmas ever, and Mrs. Kindly could think of nowhere she would rather live than here, with them, on the island of Sodor. Sir Topham Hatt was waiting. A fine piece of work, he said. James, you can rest and then take your train. I'm proud of you, Edward. You shall go to the works and have your worn parts mended. It'll be lovely not to clank. When Sir Topham Hatt came back, he was cross with James and Percy for causing so much trouble. Hello, Percy, said Sir Topham Hatt. You look tired. You look the right way up to me, laughed Sir Topham Hatt. Cheer up. The new engine is bigger than you and can probably do the work alone. Would you like to help build my new harbor? Thomas and Toby will help, too. The new engine arrived. What's your name? asked Sir Topham Hatt. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck around. The two engines went off together. Sir Topham Hatt was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly, he heard an extraordinary noise. Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Stop that noise, bellowed Sir Topham Hatt. Duck, explain this behavior. <laughs> Quiet, said Sir Topham Hatt. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. As for you, thundered Sir Topham Hatt, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Duck is quite right. This is my railway, and I give the orders. Thomas the tank engine was ill. Workmen had tried to make him better, but it was no use. Edward must take you to the works, said Sir Topham Hatt. Then Sir Topham Hatt spoke to Duck. I want you to help Percy and Toby while Thomas is away. You are a very disobedient engine. Percy knew that voice. Please, sir, get me out, sir. I'm truly sorry, sir. No, Percy, we cannot do that till high tide. I hope it will teach you to take care of yourself. It was dark when they brought floating cranes to rescue Percy. He was too cold and stiff to move by himself. Sir Topham had introduced him. Here is Diesel. I have agreed to give him a trial. He needs to learn. Please teach him, Duck. Good morning, purred Diesel in an oily voice. Pleased to meet you, Duck. Sir Topham Hatt came to stop the noise. Well, Duck? <coughs> he made cars laugh at us, accused the engines. Sir Topham Hatt recovered. He'd been trying not to laugh himself. Did you, Duck? Diesel lurked up. 
Now, Diesel, you heard what Duck said. I see, said Sir Topham Hatt. I'm sorry, Duck, but you must go to Edward's station for a while. I know he will be glad to see you. Thomas was helping to pull the cars away when Sir Topham Hatt arrived. I appreciate your feelings, said Sir Topham Hatt, but you must know that this engine and his crew have prevented a serious accident. It was a very close shave. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were being a brave engine. You were very brave indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. I'm proud of you. Sir Topham Hatt watched the rescue operation, then he had more news for Duck. And when you are properly washed and mended, you are coming home. Of course. But, sir, they don't like me. They like Diesel. Not now. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. The engines are sorry and want you back. Donald and Douglas are twins and had arrived from Scotland to help Sir Topham Hatt. But only one engine had been expected. Donald wasn't hurt, but Sir Topham Hatt was most annoyed. I am disappointed, Donald. I didn't expect such clumsiness from you. I had decided to send Douglas back and keep you. I should think so, too. You have upset my arrangements. Now James will have to help with the goods work while you have your tender mended. James won't like that. I might have known it would be Douglas, he said. Who would have been enough, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want to be fair, Douglas, but I don't know. I really don't know. Sir Topham Hatt was making up his mind about which engine to send away. But that's another story. Percy, it's nice to be back. Percy jumped. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, sir. You look nervous, Percy. What's the matter? Please, sir. Uh, they've, they've made me a desperation, sir. Uh, to, to speak to you. Topham Hatt pondered. Do you mean a deputation, Percy? Yes, sir, please, sir. Uh, it's Donald and Douglas. They say, sir, that if you send them away, sir, w well, they'll be turned into scrap, sir. That would be dreadful, sir. Uh, please, sir, don't send them away. Thank you, Percy. That will do. I had a... a deputation. I understand your feelings, and I've given a lot of thought to the matter. He paused impressively. Donald and Douglas, I hear that your work in the snow was good. You shall have a new coat of paint will be painted on you. We'll have no more mistakes. Thank you. Does this mean that the both of us? Sir Topham Hatt smiled. It means... But the rest of his speech was drowned in a delighted chorus of cheers and whistles. There was worse to come. You're in a lot of trouble, Thomas. You must go to the works and have your front mended. It will be a long job. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, a diesel rail car will do your work. As Thomas, diesels always stay in their sheds till they are wanted. Diesels never gallivant off to breakfast in station masters' houses. Percy and Toby were worried. Thomas's recent accident had caused a great deal of trouble, and Sir Topham Hatt was waiting for them with important news. Here is Daisy, the diesel rail car, who has come to help while Thomas is indisposed. That depends, said Sir Topham Hatt. Meanwhile, however long she stays, I hope you will both make her welcome and comfortable. Good. Run along now and show her the shed. She will want to rest after her journey. Next day, Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Toby and Daisy had helped to clear the wreckage, but Percy remained on his perch of freight cars. We must now try, said Sir Topham Hatt, to run the branch line with Toby and a diesel. You have put us in an awkward predicament, Percy. You must stay there till we are ready, continued Sir Topham Hatt. And you really must be more careful with freight cars. My engines work hard. I send lazy engines away. Daisy was ashamed. However, Toby says you worked hard after Percy's accident, so you shall have another chance. Excellent. What Toby doesn't know about branch line problems isn't worth knowing. Our Toby's an experienced engine.
To make matters worse, by the time Gordon had been stopped and brought back, Edward was already late with his train. So now he set off first. Henry was waiting for the visitors with the special train. Beep, beep. Sir Topham Hatt angrily pointed to the clock, but excited passengers cheered and thanked Edward, his driver and fireman. Sir Topham Hatt was now waiting impatiently for Thomas. Quickly now, he said, our Christmas tree has arrived just in time. I want you to fetch it, Thomas. Duck can look after Annie and Clarabelle until you get back. We'll see, promised Sir Topham Hatt. It would be nice to sing carols again, sighed Thomas as he set off on his important mission. Silence, said Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas left the work safely, but snow has brought the telephone lines down. We must assume he is stranded. The engines now felt sorry for Thomas, and cold but confident, the twins set off to the rescue. Sir Topham Hatt greeted them warmly. As a reward for all your hard work, you may go and enjoy the carols. Be quick now. At the big station, all was soon ready. One, two, three! Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. Ladies and gentlemen and children, I give you three cheers for Thomas the Tank Engine and all his friends who have made this occasion possible. Bringing the greatest surprise of all, Santa Claus. Everyone cheered and the party began. My doctor has forbidden me to pull. <laughs> 